and South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo together will go far. Welcome back to Ion South Asia. Sanjeev, let's talk about some community news. Um, we're going to start with Chicago. Right. So how to make Chicago more immigrant friendly? In continuing what we just discussed about, you know, young Indian Americans getting into politics yes. and uh, how their power and influence can be, you know, benefited for <laughs> these political parties. I think this is what the story is all about, but go ahead. Yes, um, Amy Gandhi is an Indian American public policy expert and she is being named to this committee right. um, the, by uh, Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel. The Office of New Americans. Yes, the That's Office of New mean, Americans, ONA. ONA. Right. So they're in charge of making Chicago more immigrant friendly. And they the have most been, immigrant friendly city in the world. That's what they want to do. Wow. This is what their um, you know, motive is, that they want to make Chicago the most immigrant friendly city in the world. Mm -hmm. And they've divided into several subgroups to tackle different issues that affect immigrants. And, you know, they want to bring about more equitable and socially responsible policies right. for that. And um, Rahm Emanuel was actually referencing one example that Barack Obama has done um, where he has given the qualified undocumented young um, the uh, young people a break from deportation right. more recently as we discussed in our previous episode correct and so he says you know this type of uh, legislation and policy is going to help immigrants and it's a step forward in the right direction for the american dream and um, citizens and people of chicago they will have something more specific to their city hmm. that's going to target immigrants that's why the title really suits well the office of new americans because this will be you know a new americans category um, mm -hmm. out of obama's policy that you know he's gonna um, you know he's gonna make sure that these individuals can actually become citizens if they meet all those criteria but Amy Gandhi is going to be on the panel, so that's a good news. Right, and this is a very new organization, so yet we don't see any policies as of yet, but they're going to be coming sure. up with them yep. in the months and years to come. <laughs> months and years to come. <laughs> <laughs> it will be a lot sooner than that since they want to make Chicago, since they want to make Chicago the most immigrant-friendly city in the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, and. Um, on that note of change and new laws and policies. And, and the too many friendly laws and how they should be controlled and how they should be restricted. Yes. That's what the story is all about. Yes, and that's concerning gun laws. Yes. Or very lenient gun laws. And this is in response to the Gurdwara shooting and several survivors, not just from that area, but also the 2007 Virginia Tech shooting, if you remember that. Of in, course. Um, where a student named, uh, what was his name, um, Sung Huey? Some, yeah, right. Um, he had, yeah, he had um, killed several students, and um, 67 family member victims have come together and actually advocated for more strict gun laws where they check the criminal and mental health background of those who are going to be purchasing guns. Right. And this was a lapse in judgment where um, this student at Virginia Tech, the shooter, was not um, checked for those things. Mm. So they believe that you know, if there are stricter gun laws, then it's going to definitely decrease the number of shootings. That's the what they believe. I mean, the shooting which occurred in Colorado, I would say, what, month ago or so, month and a half ago. Again, it's only people who go out there with guns purchased at the stores, right? Yes. Only those guys, we find out their backgrounds was not checked. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean that everybody else's backgrounds checked? Only those, they get carried away or, or their backgrounds is slipped somewhere, you know, through the cracks and their right. backgrounds never checked. But anyway, you know, tough gun, loans, uh, tough gun laws are necessary in this country and it's about time that they should do something. But none of the candidates have said a word about this. Right. And 
but it is interesting what you said about those specific instances. Yeah. But with the Gurdwara shooting, the shooter was actually an ex-army ex -army uh, veteran. Right. So right. perhaps he has more access to mm. guns than other people. I always find out that you know this shooter had this access and the other shooter had that access. Yes, perhaps somehow, it wasn't somehow they, them that went to the store and actually purchased it. They may have used it, um, their parents' gun right. or anything that they couldn't find. See, uh, you know, of course, uh, putting a restriction on a gun laws and making them very tough mm -hmm. for people to, to buy uh, guns, right? That's the one thing. But I think um, we need to find out a reason and a motive behind this gunman going in there and, uh, and shooting people. What exactly is the motive? But we'll see. And according to a recent poll by Frank Lutz for, pay, for mayors against illegal guns, 74% of National Rifle Association members known as NRA, which, is a, which has a very strong strong lobby in Washington. Mm -hmm. Members and 87% of non-NRA gun owners support requiring criminal background checks of anyone purchasing a gun. Right. So there's an overwhelming support in uh, for making stricter gun laws. Right. And so everyone, for the most part, seems to agree that and we need And most of these gun gunmen in, the, in this attacks, Bauna, if you look in, you know, if you look in back in their stories, you would find out almost all of them had no criminal background. Mm -hmm. that was and that's the... very puzzling. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we, we do hope that our politicians would address this issue. In this election, it, it doesn't seem to have been brought up enough. Just like I said earlier, NRA, National Rifle Association, mm -hmm. Very strong lobby in Washington. Very, very influential and uh, an effective lobby in Washington. That's why none of the candidates said a word about it. Yeah, that's that's very unfortunate. But here is definitely a word to be said about social media. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of stricter rules, right. so the government in India mm. has issued guidelines for its departments on how to use social media. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's been some, you know, leaking of information and just posting of private and confidential information. information. Right. So and unverified facts, what yes. they call this. Yes, which can lead to rumors. <laughs> yeah. So the government says that they are going to issue guidelines for their departments um, using social media networks because Several departments, including the White House and U.S. Army, several um, departments like that that are official and government-run, mm. they do use social media. It's mm. a very you know normal and integral part of their business and communicating to the public. Sure, sure. So with that, they do want to introduce strict guidelines, such as don't post confidential information and unverified facts, right. and they don't want rumors and you know, already the government um, in India has been trying to crack down with internet usage. Right, and at the same time, be polite, discreet, and respectful. Yes. The guidelines is saying that the personal comments for or against any individuals or agencies should not be made, and professional discussion should not be politicized. Yes, and while they feel that employees are free to post, you know, from their personal uh, profiles, they must clearly identify themselves and um, again, don't cross the boundary between personal and their jobs with confidential information. All right. And so. when we say social media, we mean, of course, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Yes. And, uh, you know, those are the most popular, I think, social media nowadays. Exactly. And as we mentioned, you know, India is also utilizing yep. all of these. Yep. Um, ways to communicate with the public. Sure. So speaking of doing business in India, we have a story about Dell company and they are taking a swipe at the Indian way of doing business. Now they have a lot of employees in India. It's uh, Dell's biggest employee base outside of the United States. Some 27,000 employees or something yes. that they have in India? Yes, right? it's a very large base and yep. they're not happy with the way business is done. They feel like um, 
you know, the infrastructure is very shaky, mm -hmm. although the country is growing very well, um, they feel like it's not supporting itself very strongly. Yeah. So they, they're citing things like the blackouts that recently left millions of people without power right. and uncertain tax rules and contracts that are not um, honored um, that make it difficult for foreign companies to actually do business in India. No, to sum it up, Bhavna, you know, uh, Dell has operations in eight cities in India and they have been in India since 1996. And yes, they have got 27,000 employees and India is Dell's biggest employee base outside the U.S. The Dell executive, what he mentioned, it is absolutely true. I mean, you know, it's, it's, you know, the uncomfortableness of doing a business in India that's all coming out, combination of power blackouts, uncertain tax rules, and the contracts that are not honored. What does this executive mean by that is that, you know, there are too many people making decisions. It's like there are too many bosses making final decisions. And people come and go. If your contract is honored by one person or one group of individuals at one time, and if they are gone and another group or another individual comes in, the mm -hmm. same contract is not honored. You will or have it's to interpret it in a different way. Exactly. Or other you will have to rewrite a contract. And the Dell doing a business in India is feeling very uncomfortable about it. It's not like they are coming out of India. They have not announced that. It. It's just one of those things out of frustration. They are making this comment that it's really difficult to do business in India mm -hmm. and of course the um, the founder of Dell Michael Dell recently mentioned in his interview that uh, that Dell is very bullish about their market share in India so they are very hopeful uh, you know uh, for India market right after China and Brazil right. but this is out of frustration but some of the things that this executive um, of Dell mentioned it is true it is very true the uncertain yeah. tax rules and the, and the contracts not being honored, and um, in a combination of power blackouts, which is not very often. This one of the uh, world's worst power blackout occurred in a few weeks ago in India. Mm -hmm. But it's not Dell, but many other companies are echoing the same uh, voice of this, that, that it's uncomfortable. Right. And I mean, it is something to be taken seriously, even yes. though they're not going to be pulling out of India. We do have some companies, such as Germans, Fraport, has recently shut down its development in India. So that's this really, is a serious issue. That's, that's a big airport development yes. um, company and they're shutting down their operation. So it is a, it's a serious issue and um, you know we hope that uh, Prime Minister and uh, President of India will take uh, certain actions. Absolutely, this. something does need to be done. All right, we're gonna take another short break. That's right. And we'll be right back on Eye on South Asia. I in South Asia is brought to you by Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo together will go far.